there, folks. Um, I think you're looking for Lisa Mason Ziegler, but she's taking the day off. So I'm filling in for her today. My name is Dave Dowling. Um, I've been working with Lisa for several years, um, do the online class with her, uh, Bob's, Perennies, Woody's, and more. Um, but I'm here today to do the Ask the Flower Farmer. Um, a couple things. If you do want to ask a question, at the bottom of your screen is a little bubble with a question mark. Type it in there, and that way I'll be able to see the questions and keep track of the questions and answer them as they come in. Um, if you're a student and you've taken one of our classes, in the comment section, you can say hello and put some of the sunflower emojis, because that's what we use to identify students that have taken our classes. But if you have any questions, put it in the little bubble at the bottom right of your screen where there's the little question mark. <clears throat> Um, until some questions come in, I got a couple of comments I want to say. Um, if you're growing limelight hydrangeas, don't forget to prune them back before they start to grow in the spring. People down south in like zone eight or nine, they may be starting to sprout out now. Farther north, zone six and seven would be probably late March. But you want to make sure you prune back those limelight hydrangeas before they start to grow in the spring. Yeah, we got some questions coming up. Uh, Queen... Selene is asking, what are my favorite pest control methods? Well, prevention is the best thing to not let the insects get in there. Um, if you're in a tunnel or a greenhouse, you need to be scouting for insects all the time, at least once a week or if not more often. Just when you walk through the greenhouse or the, the tunnel or out in your field, always look for insects so that you have any, you can, can deal with them right away. Um, nothing's worse than not paying attention and all of a sudden your snapdragons or some other crop is totally covered with aphids beyond saving them. We well, can't get rid of the aphids and it's beyond saving them. They're, they're done. All you can do is pull them up and throw them away. No amount of spraying or cleaning or rinsing is going to get them clean enough to sell them. Um, but the favorite thing is prevention. Um, you know, if you see something, sometimes it's as simple as pull up that two or three snapdragon plants that have the aphids get them away from the rest, and you've taken care of the problem. The best thing is to use a predatory insect um, where you use the, um, the good wasp that kills the aphids or things that uh, kill the thrips. Um, if you have to go with chemicals, I always like to do the, the least, um, least dangerous, if that's the word, not dangerous, but the least um, toxic. Um, there are some that are very specific, and all they'll do is kill one type of insect or one kind of mite or spider mite or aphid. Um, and then there's the other one's a broad spectrum that kills pretty much everything, including the beneficial. So it's always important to always read the label and follow the label, make sure it's labeled for the crop that you're spraying it on. Because sometimes a pesticide will do damage to your crop. Um, and sure the insect's dead, but now your crop is ruined. But always the best thing is prevention. Don't let the insects get a, a, a foothold and started and to use the beneficial insects. The thing with beneficial insects, you need to get those started and in there before you have the bad bugs. So usually like beneficial insects, they get them shipped to you every month or every six weeks. So you always have fresh ones to take care of the thrips, the aphids and things like that. Um, Abundant Blooms Flower Farm wants to know what woodies could I plant in a wet area in my farm? It's close to a gas line, so I don't want willows. Um, Winterberry holly, the ilex, the ones that lose their leaves in the fall, come either yellow and orange or red is the most traditional color for um, Christmas season, you know, after Thanksgiving, the yellow and orange for November sales. They don't mind the wet area. They don't mind being uh, soaking wet after a rain. Um, there was a grower in Maryland that years ago planted them in a wet area in his nursery and it put his kids through college. So uh, that would be my first choice with the winterberry hollies where you say you don't want willows because you're near a gas line. So um, if you're, someone's growing without gas line or septic or anything, you can always do willows. They don't mind the damp area. Can I plant my direct, can I plant my sweet pea seeds directly in the soil in 7A? I planted a few last fall and they sprouted out of the ground and looked beautiful despite the light snow. Yes, uh, sweet peas can take Snow, temperatures in the 20 is fine. They don't like to be transplanted. That's why if you're going to start them in a plug tray, you want to use a peat pot or something like that. So when you transplant it into the final planting area, they're not disturbing the roots at all. Like you couldn't do it in a plug tray and then punch them out or pull them out. You would 
basically get killed them. Um, but you can start them directly in, in place. Um, a lot of people say to soak them for a few hours first to um, soften up the skin, so to speak, or the outer shell of the seed. Or if you're going to plant them directly in the ground, make sure you water them really well when you put them in and keep them watered in the soil damp until they sprout. But you most definitely can put them right in the ground to grow them. Uh, Mom Mom 2156. Last year I planted hollyhocks and they had a fungus. How do I get rid of the fungus? Well, first of all, hollyhocks aren't a great cut flower. Um, they Usually the tips will droop over and um, the singles aren't any good. Sometimes people do the doubles, they look like a, a stalk of carnations. But the fungus, you're going to get that. Um, biggest thing is rotate, plant somewhere else, never plant them in the same place. And if you want to try and prevent it, you can spray a fungicide as a preventive, but you want to make sure it's labeled for hollyhocks. On to the next question. What overall conditions do you look for in the forecast when planting cool season flowers? How cold can they handle during the hardening off process? <clears throat> okay, cool season flowers, you can either plant them in the fall or late winter. Planted in the fall, you want to get them in where you still have a good six weeks of decent weather. It might occasionally dip down to close to freezing, but the days are still 50 or 60 degrees and the nights in the 30s or 40s. And that gives those plants a good six weeks to get established and get ready for the cold weather. And then they should do fine, um, either direct sown six weeks before or transplanting out uh, plugs like for Rebecca or uh, Sweet William. But now if you're planting them in the spring, it's a totally different thing. You can't take a, a seedling, whether it's a cool flower or not, and have it growing in a nice warm toasty house under grow lights or in a greenhouse, or if you're buying plugs from a plug grower, and plant it outside when you're going to have nights in the 20s. It just, it's going to kill that seedling. Very few plants, even though they're cold season hardy, can go from a warm toasty greenhouse to freezing. So you always want to make sure you check your weather forecast and give yourself at least a week of above freezing temperatures. Um, and if you're going to get below freezing, put row cover on them. Um, but as far as the hardening off, you don't want them to freeze during the hardening off. Hardening off. Uh, Ann Fudema is asking for starting tender annuals in the greenhouse before the last spring frost. Does the greenhouse need to be heated if nights are getting cold? Most definitely. You, you answered your own question right there. You're doing uh, tender annuals, which are the ones that can't freeze. It needs to be heated, the greenhouse. Because if you're trying to grow a seedling that you're starting at 70 degrees or 65 to germinate it, you can't let that then try and grow where it's 35 or 40 degrees a night. It's just going to sit there and struggle. Um, that's why things that are the warm season annuals like uh, Celosia, Zinnias, Gumfrina, they really want it warm before you start them. You're better off starting them later than trying to start them too early. You start them too early and you're just going to struggle because they don't like those colder temperatures. So the warm season tender annuals, you definitely need to have uh, nighttime heat. You can't let it get down in the 30s and 40s. Uh, flowers Nightingale. How do I prevent powdery mildew on my zinnias? It always starts to appear in mid-August and I freak out and it spreads. Um, well, you're not going to prevent mildew unless you're going to spray a fungicide preventively. Um, one really important thing is you should always be planting succession plantings of zinnias. So if you're planting them in, say, mid-May, plant them again mid-June, mid-July, even early August. Usually every three to four weeks, plant a new batch because the younger plants won't get the powdery mildew as easily as the older plants. Um, but as soon as you see powdery mildew, you need to treat. You can treat with any fungicide that's labeled for powdery mildew. It can be neem oil. It can be a copper fungicide. As long as it's labeled for powdery mildew and labeled for uh, cut flowers or zinnias, you can use it. But know that it will not cure any powdery mildew that's already there. If you already have the powdery mildew on the plant, there's no cure for that. All you can do is keep it from spreading to new growth. Another thing, when you're spraying for a powdery mildew or any kind of uh, disease that's like that that spreads by spores, it's always good to spray the plant and also spray the ground around it because those spores are in the ground. It rains it gets and splashes up on the plant and it just starts all over. So don't spray just the plant. Spray the ground and any other uh, area around the plants.
see if any other new questions here. I don't see any other questions. Let me make sure. There's one new one there. I'm in Texas Zone 8B, so it's probably already spring down there. What spacing would you recommend for Lysianthus, and are they good candidates for winter over for next year? Um, Lysianthus, you can space them either four, six, or eight plants per square foot. Most growers do either four or six. Um, basically, if you want to make sure you use support netting on them, uh, otherwise they're going to fall over in a thunderstorm or, or a windy day. So you're going to plant at least one plant in every square, or if you want to um, plant them more dense and get more plants in the bed, then you can plant six plants in each square foot by putting one plant in every other hole and two plants in the other ones. Think of a checkerboard, and in the black squares put one plant, in the red square put two plants. And you're asking, are there good candidates to winter over for next year? In other words, I think you're asking if you've got a plant that you're growing this year, would you let it overwinter until next year to give you a second crop off of it? That works as long as your plants look happy and healthy in September and October. And by happy and healthy, I mean they're still nice and green. They're still putting up some flowers in the fall, uh, the second flush reblooming. And then also, if you look down close at the base of the plant, you're going to see little sprouts, little eyes that are starting to grow, and they'll just sit there till next spring. If your plants look like that and have little sprouts at the base, they're still nice green color and actively growing in the fall, yes, you can overwinter them. But I found that when you overwinter them, they can give you a great flush of flowers next spring, a little bit earlier than new plants, but they don't do a good second flush. So go ahead and overwinter them, do that first great cut off of them, probably in Texas in early to mid-June, and then don't expect a second flush out of them. Uh, Flowers Nightingale is asking, if I plant my dahlias in the same spot every year, is that okay? It's not really okay. You should always rotate all of your crops, uh, both for insects and disease. Um, dahlias can get a thing that's called um, leafy gall, where it's basically, it's a organism that's naturally in the soil all over the world. And if it infects your plants, you want to make sure you don't plant back in the same spot again. And what the leafy gall does is it causes the plant to put up excessive stems. Instead of one or two stems for a tuber, it's putting up 10, and it's just not gonna grow right. So that's the main reason you wanna rotate, and the others are insects. Um, insects that are on your dahlias, whether it's the tarnished plant bug or aphids, they're gonna be overwintering the soil right there. So you wanna make sure you'd rotate your crops to help reduce the um, incidence of insects and disease. And here's a great question here. Um, Dream for Zone is asking, what hydrangea should not be pruned? Uh, basically, any hydrangea that blooms in pink or blue, you don't want to prune. Because those plants, if you look at them right now, they already have the buds that were formed last August and September that are this year's flowers. So those should never be pruned. Um, the paniculatas, like the uh, PGs and the limelight, those should be pruned. And those are usually in the white and cone-shaped flowers. Um, the ones you don't prune are commonly called mop head or the macophila type hydrangeas. Um, flowers, nightingale. If I have a clump of tubers, I'm assuming she means dahlias, and I separate, but an eye looks like it goes to another tuber, but I cut it with a different one, is that okay? That's the last question, <laughs> okay. Um, I think that you've got a clump of tubers and you've got an eye that looks like it might go to both tubers and you, I'm trying to, the eye looks like it goes to another tuber, but I cut it with a different one. Is that okay? Yeah, as long as that eye is attached firmly to a tuber, it's going to grow. Um, you can't have a tuber with no eyes. In other words, if you take a tuber and cut it in half, like in the middle, the bottom half will not grow an eye. It might grow roots and then it'll die, but it will not put out a, an eye for leaves and flowers. But as long as that tuber has an eye attached to it, that eye should grow. Ah, I love me. I love my Jesus. Zone 8A, Northeast Georgia. Grew sunflowers last year successfully. Five varieties starting in April. Did well for three months and the leaves started to get ruined. Covered with bugs, started dying. How can I protect my flowers this summer? The bugs were unreal. 
Um, the main thing is you want to make sure that you're succession planting sunflowers. You didn't say what type you did. You just said you grew five varieties. Um, sometimes later in the summer, you will get insects, but you should be picking the sunflowers before they open. They should have one little petal just starting to separate from the central disc. And that's when you pick sunflowers. And that's usually before the insects have any chance to do a damage, except if you have the tarnished plant bud, tarnished plant bug, they will damage the sunflower bud when it's so small that you don't even know that the damage has happened. But then when it opens up, it opens like half of a flower because they've damaged one side of the bud. But you should be succession planting sunflowers at least every three weeks, every two or every other week is even better or every week. Um, so you always have a fresh crop growing. But the insects, you want to make sure you pick them before they actually open. I'm new to dahlias. Direct sow or start seeds indoors? Um, I would start dahlia seeds indoors. Um, now, just so you know that a lot of times dahlia seeds may not be what you really want for cut flowers. Sometimes they'll, um, depending where you got your seeds, sometimes they're shorter bedding plant. But if you bought them from someone who's selling them as a cut flower dahlia, it should grow tall. But I would definitely start the seed indoors. And continue that same question, can I start the seeds now, direct sow or indoor seed? She's in North Carolina. Um, if you're in North Carolina, I would go ahead and start the seed soon, indoors, but you don't want to plant them outdoors until after your last frost. But it'd be much better to start them indoors in plug trays or soil blocks to get a head start on it. Um, Futter, Futter Farms. She has Rebecca coming back from last year. Is it second season Rebecca Rebecca worth the space? If the plants look happy and healthy, yes. Um, if you're talking about the herta, like Indian summer or prairie sun, some of those will actually end up being perennialized and they'll come back every year for you. Um, you didn't say where you're located, but you're in a warmer zone, that's easier than in a cold zone five or six. Um, but if the plants look happy and healthy, go ahead and let it grow. Um, you have nice big plants this year. Uh, many sources say to start seeds six to eight weeks before your last frost and then transplant after the late frost. Gardener's Workshop says start seeds f four weeks before the last frost doing soil blocking. She's confused as to which to do since there's such different time frames. A big difference depends on what the actual variety is. Um, something like a celosia gets ready in three to four weeks to plant out. A sunflower in two and a half weeks. Uh, zinnias are ready in two and a half to three weeks. Um, something like an aster might take six weeks. So that's why each variety is a little bit different. Um, the seed packs might say six to eight weeks, um, but there are some things that if you left in a plug tray or on soil blocks for six to eight weeks, it just can get too big. Something like a celosia, a sunflower, or a zinnia. But most things, um, the six weeks is a good average, um, but you gotta think of how quick that plant grows. If it's gonna be slower growing, you wanna make sure you give it more time. And you're better off planting a warm season annual two weeks later in the field than planting it two weeks early and have it get damaged or stunted by cold weather. How can I keep green beetles from eating my purple canna plants? Um, I'm not sure what kind of green beetle you have, but um, the beetle started out as a grub, so you need to get rid of the grubs and then you won't have the beetles. Um, there are beetle traps, but usually you wanna put those away from your plants. Um, but as far as beetles eating things, usually you either have to spray something or just go out every day and pick them off and put them in a bucket of soapy water to kill them. Uh, Kiddick 1208, can I start seeds now? Direct sower, indoor seed. I live in North Carolina. I would not plant outdoors until it's warmer unless you're doing cool season plants um, like snapdragons, uh, dianthus. Those you could plant out now. If you didn't say where in North Carolina, North Carolina I think has zones from six to eight. Zone eight, you can probably plant outside now for the cold season or the cool season plants. Warm season, you would not plant outside until after your frost. The Painted Petal Flower Company, Over, overwintered my dahlias and peonies in zone 8B how do I reamend the soil where they are at? Sprinkle fertilizer and compost on top. Because you, re, you overwintered your dahlias and peonies. Obviously, your peonies will over, always leave in the ground. You never dig those. But you overwintered your dahlias. Yes, just sprinkle fertilizer, water and fertilizer, add compost on the surface. <coughs> How 
How can I grow canna plants from seeds? They are hard. Um, canna seeds are available, but most of the time they're sold as the root division. Um, or actually in the commercial industry, they actually do it from tissue culture. Uh, canna seeds are not easy to grow. You'd be better off buying canna roots at a garden center, or you can actually order uh, buy plants at a garden center. One life live in zone 6B. It's new to the gardening and starting a ranunculus in the basement. Do they need a heating mat and light? If yes to either, how long does the light need to be on for them? Well, if you say you're starting them in the basement, they do not need heat. The worst thing you do for a ranunculus is put them in a 70 degree heating mat because they're going to think it's summertime and go dormant and never grow. They'd like to be in the 50 degree range. They don't need light until the actual top has started to grow and you have leaves growing. Just the roots grow at the bottom. You don't need to worry about light. Um, if you're growing them in either a, a flat of soil or a plug trays, once you have the leaves starting to show, you need to have lights, and the light should be on for at least 10 to 12 hours a day, um, if not longer. Uh, Flutter Farm says her seedlings seem stunted in her soil blocks, growing very slowly. Recommendations. Um, how warm is it? Do you have bottom heat? Is it 70 degrees? Most seeds want to be at 70 degrees. Colder than that, they're going to grow really slow if they grow at all. And also um, check your fertility. I one time had somebody send me pictures of snapdragons in soil blocks and they were an inch tall and the most awful color, yellowish green I've ever seen. And they, she just had no fertility in her soil blocks. She gave them fertilizer and literally within two weeks they were greened up and growing and ready to plant out in the field. Yeah, Crystal says she has lots of seeds from her canna plants. They do produce seeds, but they're very slow growing. That's why they're almost always sold as a root division or as a plant that's grown from tissue culture. Uh, living life my way in zone 9B, California. My pin cushion plants wouldn't over and they're huge. The black knight and white of the same. Should I cut them way back? You wanna cut back any really tall foliage? Um, but don't be cutting any leaves that are close to the ground. Notice if they're eight inches tall, go ahead and prune them back some, um, but you don't want to cut everything back. You can remove any really big extra leafy stuff that they don't really need because your flower stems all grow from the, the ground level. I'm in zone 7B and have tulips planted in the field. They're just starting to pop up about an inch or two. If we get in the mid 20s at night, should I row cover? Should I use row cover or will that be okay? Tulips can take 25 degrees, no problem, even when they have buds showing. Um, I always like to say that don't go out and look at them first thing in the morning because you're going to freak out because they all look terrible, ugly green. They're flopped over on the ground, but once it warms up, they'll perk up and they'll be fine. So you don't need to cover tulips if it's only in the mid-20s, no problem. But like I said, don't freak out when you look at them at 8 in the morning as the sun comes up because they're going to look awful. I usually do my dahlia tubers 10 to 12 inches apart. Can I plant closer this year? What is the optimal spacing? 10 to 12 inches, I wouldn't go any closer than 12 inches. Um, I even like better like 18 or 24. So I would not do any closer than the 10 to 12. I'm guessing you have that 10 to 12 in a single row, or maybe you have two rows in a bed. Um, there's a way to grow dahlias where you plant them close together like that in a single row. And then you do what's called the tomato weave, where you put stakes down that row or a fence post, really sturdy. and kind of weave it back and forth with a string to hold them up. But I wouldn't go any closer than 10 to 12 inches. Sometimes my celosia is stunted. How do I prevent this? Uh, short stop flowers in zone three. Um, zone three, my guess is you plant them out too soon. Zone three, it doesn't get warm up there probably till middle of June before you put it out. Celosia is gonna be a tough one to grow in zone three because your, your warm season is so short. Um, that would definitely be a candidate for either low tunnels or a high tunnel uh, to keep it really warm earlier in the season. Um, the other thing is if you're growing them in either plug trays or soil blocks and don't get them planted out in time, they will be stunted. If you have young plants that aren't planted out yet and they get dried out, that will stunt them. Um, but the, usually the cool weather and getting root bound are two things that will stunt celosias. The biggest things are heat lovers, don't start them too early. We have 20 blueberry plants, they're huge. How far off the top should we cut? Some of them are 12 feet tall. Do we cut just the dead wood or do we cut back the top? Um, I would cut them down halfway. If you've got 
blueberry bushes are 12 feet tall, I'd cut them down to five or six feet tall. Um, and don't worry about cutting new wood or old wood, just cut them down to five feet tall. Um, is it okay to fertilize lilies grown in crates with Neptune's harvest seaweed and fish emulsion fertilizer? Yes, it's fine. You can use that. Just know that those are both very mild fertilizers. You know, the, the nitrogen and the phosphorus is like one or 2%. So you need to use quite a bit of it and do it more than once. Zone 8A in Northeast Georgia grew sunflowers. Oh, I already answered that one. Let's see if we've got any new ones here. I haven't done yet. How many sets of snaps, how many sets of leaves should snaps have before planting out? What should night temperatures be? Well, if these are new seedlings, you're going in a toasty warm place under lights in your house or in a greenhouse, you don't want to plant them out until the days are, I mean, until the nights are at freezing or above. Like I said earlier, you don't want to take a, a fresh young plant that's grown warm and toasty in a house or a greenhouse and put it out and let it freeze at night. It's just not going to be good for that plant. They need to harden off. Um, that's why if you plant snapdragons in September, early October, they have plenty of time to get used to cold weather, but you can't take them out of a warm place and put them out where it's cold. Uh, but how many sets of leaves should they have before planting out? Uh, usually probably three to four sets of leaves. They might be two to three inches tall. I think this goes back with the snapdragon, uh, the sweet peeps question. Do I have to file the seeds for water to be able to get access? It's able to flower or do I soak them? You can just soak them. I'm pretty sure that was the same uh, sweet pea person. Uh, here's a good question. Should gladiolus be succession planted? Most definitely, yes. Um, you can succession plant and plant them every two weeks starting around your last frost date up until about July 1st because they do take a full 12 weeks to get ready. So July 1st will be blooming October 1st. If you plant August 1st, they're gonna not bloom till November and then they're gonna freeze. So usually you can keep planting up until about July 1st, maybe a little bit later if you're in a warmer zone, but definitely can succession plant them. And you can also save a little money by buying a full crate of 500 of them and then just store them cool and dry. Sitting in the basement is fine. A cooler is usually too cold, just in your basement that's cool and dry and then plant out 100 or 200 every couple of weeks until you get them all planted. For dahlias and ranunculus, what is the best fertilizer for them? Um, I hate to say what's the best fertilizer. You can use the cheap 10, 10, 10 from the hardware store. You can buy the Neptune's Harvest. You can use the blue fertilizer that's like miracle Grow, but it's a commercial variety. Um, the best fertilizer is the fertilizer that you use. Um, whatever you use, just follow the instructions in the bag. It will work. Just make sure you use enough. Because like I said earlier, some of the organic ones are very low in nutrients, the, the percentage of the um, active ingredient. So as a fertilizer is 2-2-2, it's only 2% nitrogen. If it's 20-20-20, that bag is 20% nitrogen. So you got to look at the active ingredients and those three numbers and figure how much of that do you need to use and how often do you need to use it. Usually something that a liquid organic is great short term, but it doesn't last a long time in the soil. So you need to reapply it, especially for something that you're expecting to grow and continue to bloom over a long period of time, whether it's zinnias that you're going to cut on for a couple of months or dahlias that you plant in May and you're still hoping to be picking them in October, you're going to need to fertilize them again sometime in the middle of the summer, sometimes even a second time or a third time. Uh, here's a good question. Can you wake up dahlia tubers Early, if so, early, if so, how early and what method do you suggest? You can literally take a dahlia, dig it in October and have it growing in December. Um, they don't really need a dormant period, but we give them a dormant period because we want them to be dormant until we can plant them again next spring. So you can start your dahlias anytime. And the best way to do that is give them warm uh, temperatures, around 70 degrees and slightly damp soil. You can take those tubers and lay them on the soil. They don't need to be buried, but it's the warm 70 degree temperatures and slight damp soil. And I'm almost at one o'clock and I've got a meeting at one o'clock. So I'm gonna have to go real quick when I'm done at nine at one o'clock Eastern time here. And let me see if there's any other questions. I don't see any more right now. If I've answered all the questions that were in the comments, 
in the question bubble, if they're in the comments, I wouldn't have seen those. And I want to see one there, and it was a duplicate. Uh, somebody's asking, how close can you plant zinnias? Um, and how are they going to start from seed zone five in Canada? She has a small greenhouse. They like it hot, so don't start them too soon. They're ready to plant out in three, to three, maybe three and a half weeks after you sow them. So count from your last frost date, count back three weeks, and that's when you would start them. Um, and how close together? I like to put in about a foot, and that makes a nice hedge of zinnias. You can do as much as two per square foot, but that is almost too many. Because once you get big and bushy, it can get crowded, and you're better off having some good air circulation so you don't get uh, powdery mildew. So it's one o'clock and I got to go now. Um, thanks you all for joining. Lisa should be back next week. Um, until then, you'll have a great week and bye-bye.